What's going on, MMA fans? I'm back to do my UFC 102 Couture vs. Noguera predictions taking place August 29th from the Rose Garden in Portland, Oregon. Just a quick reminder, MMATalk.tv in conjunction with PerformanceMMA.com uh, you know, is still doing their UFC 102 prediction contest. I'll put the link up over in the description side. If you correctly pick all the fights um, for the prediction contest, you, you know, have a chance to win a $1,000 shopping spree courtesy of PerformanceMMA.com. So make sure you go check that out. Um, free money, free gear, free MMA clothing. Can't beat that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to work my way from the bottom of the main card all the way to the top like I normally do. Um, first fight of the night, Brandon Vera taking on Christoph Szczynski. Brandon Vera trading out of uh, Team Lloyd Irvin. Um, he has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, good Muay Thai skills, good boxing, uh, you know, good leg kicks, good high kicks, good clinch, decent wrestler. Um, he's taking on a formidable opponent in Christoph Szczynski. Christoph Szczynski trading out of Team Quest. Um, has really improved on his boxing. Um, you know, we saw that against Andre Guzmão. Um, good clinch, good wrestler, good grappler. He's got very, very good um, submissions and a very, very good top game if he can get on top of you. Um, in this fight, I think that you're going to see Szczynski try to get this down um, You know, while Vera tries to keep it standing. Um, the key to this fight is which Brandon Vera shows up. If it's the Brandon Vera that's a killer, um, this fight could end very, very quickly. If it's the Brandon Vera that's the slow starter, um, this fight could drag out a little bit. Um, I think Vera's going to come out and start slow. I think Szczynski will get some takedowns. But you know, Vera's good enough in the grappling um, that I don't see him getting caught in a precarious position. I think he'll get this back to his feet. Um, multiple times if he has to, work in and out of the pocket, use the leg kicks, use the jab, um, you know, throw Szynski's timing off. And I think he's going to catch him late second, early third, and finish him with a third-round TKO. So that is my pick. Brandon Vera, third-round TKO. All right, next fight uh, for the chance to either be, depending on, you know, uh, who is the next number one contender since it's been tossed back and forth. It's been Dan Henderson, then the winner of Nate, this fight, Nate Marquardt, Demi Maia, then back to Dan Henderson, who knows? But nonetheless, um, Nate Marquardt taking on Demi and Maya. Nate Marquardt training out of Jackson's. Um, good wrestler. Has really improved on his boxing as of late. His clinch, uh, his leg kicks, his striking all together has really, really improved. Um, he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Very good top game. If he gets on top of you, you're in serious trouble. Um, he's got an excellent top game. Uh, he's taking on probably one of the best grapplers, if not the best grappler at 185 uh, in Demi and Maya. Demi and Maya training out of the Van Fight team. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. Um, is improving on his hands. It's still a part of his game that is weak. Good clinch, decent wrestling. Um, I really, I don't think there's any surprise in what's going to happen in this fight. Demi Maia is going to try to get this fight down to the ground. Um, he may get one or two takedowns, but what I see happening is more court using his footwork, um, staying away from the clinch, using the leg kicks, using the jab, using the one-two combinations, keeping Demi Maia. Um, kind of guessing, and I see Nate Marquardt um, taking a unanimous decision in this one um, and avoiding, um, you know, the fight going down to the ground. Um, it could be, you know, an interesting, compelling fight on the feet, but I think it's going to be primarily Nate Marquardt using footwork, leg kicks, one-two combinations backing out, leg kicks, one-two combinations backing out, um, and I think Marquardt's going to take a decision in this one, so that is my pick, Nate Marquardt via unanimous decision. All right, next fight. Uh, this one should be interesting. Chris Lieben taking on Jake Roseholt. Uh, Chris Lieben trading out of Icon Fitness MMA. Uh, Heavy-handed. Um, he's an underrated grapple on the ground. He does have some pretty good submissions. Um, decent takedown defense. Never gives up. Perseveres through all of his fights and pushes through. Um, he's taking on a very, very talented wrestler in Jake Roseholt, uh, who is training out of uh, Extreme Couture and also Team Takedown. Um, he's got decent hands. Um, solid wrestler. Pushes the pace. Loves to move forward. Has shown some deficiencies, though, with his, his hands as far as protecting himself and using head movement, and that has gotten him into some trouble uh, in his fights. Um, in this fight, you know, I think Rose Holt's going to try to look to take this down. Um, I think he will be able to get it down um, throughout several parts of this fight. I think Liebham, um is going to get back to his feet. Rose Holt's going to try to exchange. I think Rose Holt's going to make a mistake with his movement with his head, which it's just... I went back and watched some of his fights, and someone said something to me about this, and I looked at it, and yeah, he's going to run into some problems if he doesn't use head movement in this fight. Um, I think Lieben's going to crack him, um, drop him, and finishes him on the ground. I'm going to say Chris Lieben uh, finishes uh, Jake Rolls-Holt with a second-round knockout. Um, Rolls-Holt could take a unanimous decision in this one um, if Lieben can't get back up to his feet, but I think Lieben will get back to his feet. Uh, they'll exchange. Lieben's going to catch him and finish him, so that's my pick. 
All right, next fight, co-main event of the evening, Keith Jardine taking on Tiago Silva. Keith Jardine trading out of Jackson's. Um, unorthodox striker, um, has very good leg kicks, uh, a black belt in gaijutsu, um, good wrestling, um, you know, and throughout some of his fights has shown some deficiencies as far as weathering the early storm and not being able to deal with people who push the pace. Um, he's taking on Tiago Silva, who's training out of the American top team. Um, solid Muay Thai, loves to push the pace, Good top game, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, um, loves to brawl. Um, you know, t this this fight is kind of reminiscent to me of the fight with Vanderlei Silva, the fight with um, um, Houston Alexander for Heath Jardine. I don't think this is a good matchup for him. Um, he's run into problems with guys that push the pace that move forward on him. He doesn't do well with er you know weathering the early storm. He doesn't do well with guys that brawl. And exchange and push the pace on him. Um, you know, Jardine could have a good game plan and could circle away and you know use some good leg kicks, some one, good one-two combinations, and avoid um, you know exchanging and brawling with Tiago Silva. But um, he's got caught up in that before, and I think he's going to get caught up in it again. Um, I think Tiago Silva is going to finish him brutally first round TKO. Um, Jardine just has too many issues with that in the first round, um, with not weathering an early storm when guys push the pace, and I think we're going to see that again in this fight. So that's my pick, Tiago Silva via a late first round TKO. All right, on to the main event. Randy Couture taking on, uh, uh Antonio Rodrigo Minotaro Nogueira. Um, Randy Couture training out of Extreme Couture. Um, good clinch. Um, as far as the Greco-Roman is concerned, um, he's got good boxing and dirty boxing. Has very good cardio. Um, we've seen that in his fights. Solid top game if he can get on top of you. Um, you know, and, and loves to use the war of attrition style to try to wear his opponents down. Um, he's taking on um, uh, Minotaur Noguero, who's training out of Team Nog, uh, and also the Black House Gym. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Judo black belt, solid boxing, good clinch, um, can take loads and loads of punishment uh, without, you know, uh, getting into trouble and coming back from it. Um, you know, in this fight, you know, I think Randy will try to keep this standing. I think he'll try to clinch um, when he can and use some dirty boxing and then push away, um, and, you know, and use some, some good boxing. But I think what's going to happen is Randy's going to get caught up um, exchanging. He might get caught, which I could see happening where he gets caught a little bit. Kind of backs up, uh, Nog moves forward on him, throws some more combinations, clinches with him, gets him down, gets on top of him, and submits him. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think that Nog will be able to get this fight down to the ground, get on top of Randy, on top of him, not from the bottom, but more so on top of him, um, and finish him with either an arm bar or maybe get his back um, and go for something from there, maybe a rear naked choke. But nonetheless, I think Noguera is going to take this fight. I'm going to say he wins via a second round submission. So that is my pick. All right, well, these were my picks for UFC 102. Make sure you leave me some comments. Construct the negative positive, as always. Make sure you check out the MMATalk.tv prediction contest. You could win $1,000 as far as a shopping spree is concerned. I'll be back tomorrow night um, to uh, kind of put up like an update video uh, about some things that are going on in MMA and talk about you know a lot of different news and things that are going on. I also will have an interview up here in the next couple days. It'll be exclusive with MMATalk.tv, so look out for that. So on that note, you guys, have a great day.